Until the time of his death in 1938, John D. Rockefeller awoke in a cold sweat for fear that he would lose his vast fortune. He inculcated this fear in other members of his family. John D.'s daughter, Bessie Strong, ended her life, according to the family biographer William Manchester, with the pitiful fear that she would die penniless. Winifred Rockefeller Emini, John D.'s grandniece, murdered her two children and committed suicide because of a fear of poverty. Another niece, Gladys, at age 21, was hospitalized for her mental condition. After each meal, she would save every crust of bread and every scrap of meat for fear that she could not afford another meal. Mary Clark Rockefeller, Nelson's first wife, said that her husband, despite his income of a million dollars a minute, was even more penny-pinching and penurious than his grandfather. Mrs. Rockefeller further testified that Nelson spied on the domestic help to make sure that they did not eat too much food. Hello, all my truth seekers. My name is Keisha, and welcome to The Truth Show. In the heart of bustling New York City, a family's legacy unfolded, a tale of wealth, power, and influence that would echo through time. Keep it here, dear listeners, as I spin the yarn of the Rockefellers. I'll be telling this in a story format. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. John D. Rockefeller, that's what he was all about. He's the richest man in the world, was raised by a psychopath. John D. Rockefeller's dad was named, they called him Devil Bill. His dad, they know all about his dad. This is not a conspiracy theory. Their family, the historians will tell you about his father. He created him. He was a rapist, snake oil salesman, running from the law, changed his name. Uh, Devil Bill? Devil Bill. That was his name. So he had a bunch of sons and John D. Rockefeller was one. And he was known, he wanted to, he was quoted as saying, I cheat my sons every day. I want them sh as sharp as can be. He just beat the living fucking trust out of them and just drowned all their trust. So he, John D. Rockefeller grew up not trusting anybody. Dude, he got busted for monopolizing oil. They finally indicted him. He had to break out, break apart Standard Oil and it made him a billionaire. That's what made him rich is when he got busted. When he had to sell everything off, he just, he took over education. Dude, you know how he took over uh, universities? Dude, he wanted to take over the world. He wasn't just trying to sell gas. He was trying to take over the world. Our education system is all based on Rockefeller Foundation shit. Like, what? he strategically wanted to make school so that we got people just smart enough just this isn't conspiracy theory just smart enough to work they didn't want anybody too smart that's how the school systems he, were designed the story begins across the atlantic in the rhineland region of germany in the early 17th century Johann Peter Rockefeller made a fateful decision. He packed his dreams and sailed to the new world, seeking fortune and opportunity. His destination? Hmm, who knows? Philadelphia, in the province of Pennsylvania. Johann Peter became a plantation owner, tilling Somerville and Emwell, New Jersey soil. Oh, yes. The Rockefellers were a German family who had six children. The second son was named John who was born in the year 1839 in New York. Their father was, often moving from one city to another, cause of financial situation was very tight. John would do any job he could find to meet the needs of his mother. At some point, their father disappears. After that, he moved to Cleveland with his mother in the year 1854. After about a year and a half, he left the school. He felt like school was just wasting his time, so he got a job at a bookstore near their house. He worked full days for only 50 cents. John persevered with the job and tolerated the low pay. But after some time, he left the bookstore knowing that this was the beginning of his plans. He'd been thinking since he was little about how to escape from the poverty he was living in. So based on his good reputation and these relationships, he went to the bank and asked for a loan of $4,000. John took the loan and ventured into the world of fruits, vegetables, meat, and food products. In just one year, he made more than half a million dollars in profits from his business. 
Most of the profit went back to the bank, but he gained experience, grew his network, and learned how the market swings. After that, the banks were chasing him, asking him to take a loan from them. And he was not even 18 years old yet. But the real game-changer for John was when he discovered the first oil well in America. A new era in Pennsylvania. If you're really interested, let me know in the comments. But wait, it was said that John Peter didn't find oil, former slaves did. Even though there have always been things that can be used for oil, the modern petroleum business, its products and their uses are fairly new at this time. Petroleum started in the coil and kerosene business in the late 1800s as an essential part of politics, society and technology. Oh yes, making paraffin from crude oil is one of the oldest examples of this. Abraham Gessner devised a way to turn coil, bitumen, and oil shell into a liquid fuel that he later called kerosene. It burned cleaner than well oil and cost less. In 1847, James Young noticed a natural petroleum seepage when he distilled a light thin oil that could be used as lamp oil and a thicker oil for grease machines. In the middle of the 1800s, the first modern oil wells and factories were built. In the 1800s, oil businesses grew in many countries. Still, the two biggest were the United States and the Russian Empire, especially the part of the now independent Azerbaijan Empire. During the 1800s, these two countries made 97% of the world's oil. However, some records indicate that the Rothschild and John Peter learned of the power of petroleum seepage from the slaves on various plantations who use to light lamps or sticks, something that has been used for centuries by the Egyptians. Egyptians also used it to fire their machines for building and digging projects and lighting their tunnels and homes and whatever fortresses they built at the time. You may have seen this on walls worldwide and in movies, such as The National Treasure. So Rockefeller instilled dominance and fear and made hundreds of slaves at this time dig, disturbing what they already were using. Later, Rockefeller claimed it as their own. And right to this day, the family is still living off that invention that they did not discover. Fast forward to the bustling streets of New York. William Avery Rockefeller Sr., born to a Protestant family in Granger, New York, emerged as a pivotal figure. His humble beginnings belied the grand destiny that awaited his lineage. William had six children with his first wife, Eliza Davison, a daughter of a Scots-Irish farmer. Two of these children would rise to prominence. John D. Rockefeller and William A. Rockefeller Jr., their names would soon resonate across continents and history books. You see, it was simple for any Caucasian man or family to achieve success. They wielded enormous authority throughout this era. Oh yes. Guess what, my truth seekers? Did you know that you can get exclusive commercial free videos on my Patreon? I post my viral and block YouTube videos on there and more and stories that I wrote. You know, I write stories, people. Oh, yes, I post them on there. I'm going to start doing my video diary on there pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, I need to communicate with my truth seekers. They are lifesavers. I love you all. Oh, okay, I'm supposed to be advertising my Patreon. The link is below. John D. Rockefeller, known as Senior and his brother William A. Rockefeller Jr. embarked on a journey to shape the world, their canvas, the American petroleum industry. They amassed a colossal fortune through Standard Oil, the precursor to Exxon Mobil and Chevron Corporation. Black gold flowed through their veins and their influence extended far beyond oil wells. They held sway over Chase Manhattan Bank, weaving financial webs that spun generations. During this time, you see, they exploited fear and white supremacy of the laws to secure many bargains, not to mention the slaves they owned.
By 1987, the Rockefellers stood as titans, one of the most powerful families in American history. Their fingerprints adorned politics, business, and philanthropy. John D. Rockefeller Sr., a devout Northern Baptist, supported church-based institutions. While most Rockefellers followed the Baptist faith, some leaned toward it. Episcopalians, like a mighty river, their wealth irrigated education, conservation, and arts fields. With this power, they needed to conceal their robberies and bloody crimes, ensuring their free Negroes were unaware of what they did or who they were. So the Rockefellers set out to shape history, religion, and other issues. As a result, white supremacy remained admired and influential. Well, until now, which is why they're trying to get rid of TikTok. This is the man who created school. You may not recognize him, but he is responsible for trapping you for 12 years of your life and teaching you history and a bunch of useless things you will forget once you graduate. He is also responsible for the creation of oil and the founder of Big Pharma. His name is John D. Rockefeller and once said in a quote that he wants a nation of workers, not a nation of thinkers. Unfortunately, his family is still around and is now trying to add more restrictions to natural remedies, including sea moss, which increases testosterone in men. They want us sick and weak, so we can't stand up against them. So what should you do? Stock up on herbs and natural plants that will heal the body. These plants will heal you and your family and make you not dependent on the system or these evil people. Go to Dr. Truth Shop before they take control of your future health. The Rockefellers weren't content with mere riches. I mean, no. They championed causes that transcended their bank vaults. Their impact rippled through fields as diverse as healthcare, education, and environmental conservation. Their name became synonymous with progress, echoing through corridors of time. Oh, they did not stop there. They desired world dominance in all domains. I want to own everything. As a result, they sought to exert control over medicine, healthcare, education, and other areas. And so, my dear listeners, my truth seekers, you see, the Rockefeller saga continues a tapestry woven with threads of ambition, resilience, and legacy. The story reminds us that wealth, when wielded wisely, can shape nations and leave an inedible mark on humanity. Remember this tale as you walk through the streets of New York for hidden among the skyscrapers and bustling crowds. The spirit of the Rockefellers endures a beacon of ambition and a testament to today's American reality. Uh, but don't worry. Things are changing and the Rocker family family's clout is fading drastically. This is why the war in Ukraine is critical. As I stated in previous videos and live shows, this is necessary to sustain white supremacy. Our relationship with our sister slash sibling in the United Kingdom, also known as the UK, and Canada's elected prime minister must remain intact because they do supply most of our oil. So yes that's where most of their money are coming from from us however as you are aware ukraine is rapidly becoming a war zone which is why biden is always attempting to send billions of dollars in aid despite the fact that they already have aid money yes i just hope putin doesn't drop a massive atomic bomb over there and call it a day don't overlook however places here in the united states such as texas North Dakota, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Colorado. These are our key oil sources. The Rockefeller family owns a majority of the drilling locations. However, karma and fate have now turned against them. Have you heard about the weather in these locations? Through the air is the twist tonight with breaking news. Dozens of tornadoes touched down in at least three states, including Texas, Oklahoma, and Nebraska. Take a look at this massive funnel cloud tearing across an interstate north of Lincoln, Nebraska. Large pieces of debris can be spotted flying through the air as the twister spins just out of control. 
In addition to tornadoes and torrential downpours, parts of Texas, including Arlington, were hit with hailstorms, some as large as golf balls. And the threat is far from over. This dangerous system will stretch from Michigan to Texas with twisters, large hail, and damaging winds straight through the weekend. It is tornado season, and CBS's Omar Villafranca will start us off tonight from Ennis, Texas, which is currently under a severe weather alert. Dramatic moments along Interstate 80 near Lincoln, Nebraska this afternoon as a dangerous tornado crossed the highway, flipping a semi-truck. Storm chasers stopping to check on the driver narrowly missed being hit by debris as the twister tore through. He's okay, he's okay. Houses shredded in Douglas County, some taking a direct hit by the destructive tornado. A newly built neighborhood with a few homes still under construction, now gone. This is the dangerous storm that we are tracking right now here on the Weather Channel, a confirmed and large and destructive tornado. That is a tornado. Multiple tornadoes ripping through the state. That is a tornado in Lincoln, Nebraska. With reports of major damage, including a building collapse near Waverly and a train blown off the tracks. Wow. The violent tornadoes also tearing through central Texas, like this massive one near Waco. The same storm pelting Arlington with hail and heavy rain. Here in Texas, first responders will be on standby all weekend because of the severe weather. And this afternoon, just this part of the state had tornadoes, hail, high winds, and heavy rain in just a few hours. Margaret? According to news reports, December 26, 2023 local time, North Dakota in the Midwest of the United States, a rare extreme natural disaster occurred. The ice storm caused the wires to be crushed. 5,000 households were without electricity. The trees were broken. Seriously affect traffic. The thickness of ice on some objects reached 3.2 centimeters. What needs to be emphasized here is that don't underestimate the thickness of 3.2 centimeters. It refers to the ice on all objects. Let's look at the picture of the scene. To explain this kind of natural Natural disaster. Ice storms are not ice and snow. It is due to freezing rain or frozen liquid precipitation disturbed with a phenomenon. Simply put, the falling rain comes into contact with anything. Will quickly form ice. Many places call it freezing rain. Simply put, it forms when two streams of cold air meet. A stream close to the Earth's surface. One is high above, and there is a layer of warm air in the middle, which will form. If a thin layer of ice forms on the surface of an object, we call it freezing rain. If this phenomenon continues to happen, we'll reach the ice storm level as early as many snowstorms. This phenomenon has appeared Extend here by the way Although there is an El Ni N tilde O phenomenon this year But I lost to La Nina after all Causing a lot of snowfall this year Either that or this storm's just outflow dominant Which is in and of itself is fine But Oh, there it is. Tornado. Keep going, keep going. 
Oh, I right see. there. Tornado on the ground. Tornado on the ground. We've got a tornado on the ground, guys. Tornado on the ground. Can you hear me? Tornado's on the ground. Uh, Raul's going to turn the camera. F tornado funnel on the ground with this storm uh, just to the north of Rice, Texas. Right there, right there. It is on the ground. Can right you see it in your account. screen? There it is. What we have is a perfect funnel. And it's growing. We are looking. We're on this road. We're pointing north just west of Interstate 45. And there's a tornado that appears to be on the north side of the town of Rice or just north of the town. And it's moving away from us. There is just one thing left to say. Welcome to the age of Aquarius, where the truth is revealed and dynasties that were built on blood, lies, and plagiarism will fall. Here's a brief word from my sponsor. The world's falling apart. Every day, another shocking headline makes you wonder what tomorrow will bring. That's why those who know what's coming are using today to prepare. I'm talking about getting your family some high quality emergency food from my Patriot Supply. My Patron Supply is a nation's leading preparedness company. They've been in business for going on 14 years now, and they've served millions of American families. Now they want to help you by giving you $50 off their popular four-week emergency food kit. Oh, yes. You get four weeks of food per person with meals designed to give you more than 2,000 calories a day. By the way, this food stays fresh up to 25 years in proper storage, so it will be there when you need it. Other food goes bad first, you know what I mean? So don't wait, go to prepare with my link here with the truth and claim your four week emergency food kit. You will save $50 per kit if you act now. So prepare with me at preparewithtruth.com. Don't wait, do it today. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below on that note. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that bell so you get notifications for when I do post my videos. See you later.